everybody, it's Angie, and today I'm going to do part three of my epic search for a uh, new foundation. Now, um, the reason I started this is because it's winter time and the air is so dry, and I usually use Bare Minerals as my go-to foundation over a tinted primer, and I was just feeling like it was making my skin feel drier and look drier during the winter, so it got me started looking for a liquid foundation. So I did a bunch of reviews on liquid foundations from both the drugstore and the high end. And um, this week, the third installment, I decided to look at more of the powder foundations. I tested seven powders this week, and of those, I liked five of them. So considering that I did 15 liquids high end and drugstore and I hated all but one, um, and that out of these, what did I say, seven, I liked five. Not bad. So I would have to say that I am a powder person. I guess I like it that it's a lighter coverage and it looks more natural um, than the liquids. And plus the liquids, you have to do so many steps. You have to powder over them anyway. And I find that with the powder, you don't have to powder over it. So cutting out a step, making it more simple. The parameters for this one are that, as with the other ones, I did the teenager test where test where I ask my teenage daughters what they thought of it. So I do ask my teenagers to look at it and they tell me if it's good or bad. And then I also do a phone test. I press my phone up to my face to see how much um, of the uh, product comes off on my phone because it's one of my pet peeves. I just hate it. I don't like a lot of phone transfer. And um, you know what? Some products do and some products don't. I applied each of these using a primer. I have a drugstore primer and I have a high-end primer. Uh, so the few drugstore ones, I use the Rimmel primer, and for the high-end ones, I either, if I sampled it, I got a sample of a primer of the same brand, or I used my Benefit uh, Porefessional. I tried three high-end powders and four drugstore brands. So let's get started. Now the first one is um, by Physician's Formula. It's called Covertox 10, and it comes in this little plastic uh, compact Here's what the product color looks like. Now I'm, you know, the drugstore ones, it's hard for me to color match myself. So I, this one I think only came in two shades anyway. So it was either grab the light or the medium. And it has this little brush with a mirror in the underneath part. So it's not a bad little package. And this was $12.99 and it's a third of an ounce. All right, and this has no SPF in it. Okay, I'm kind of looking down here because I'm reading because I made notes on each of these. So the claims on this is why I bought it. Let me just feel it. This is so soft. This is a really nice silky feel. And there's the finger swatch. So now let me read you their claims, which I felt were fairly outrageous. And um, this one was not good. So the claims were ultra smooth face powder, which is true actually reduces, actually reduces the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Uses a blend of FABA and BVOSC, whatever that is, to provide instant and long-lasting wrinkle masking results and improve skin tone, firmness, and elasticity. Hypoallergenic, fragrance-free, non-commutogenic. All right, you'll be shocked to know that uh, it does not mask your wrinkles. <laughs> And it uh, did not improve my skin tone, um, firmness, or elasticity in any way. Of course, I only used it once, but I'm, I don't think a powder that I'm putting on top of my skin is going to do any of that stuff for me anyway. But with this one, it was really hard to get any coverage. It is, it's so fine and so sheer that I could see maybe you might use this as a finishing powder. But it says, uh, does it even say it's a foundation? No, it says it's a wrinkle therapy face powder. So I don't even know if you're supposed to use it as a foundation or just as a setting powder. I tried to use these as a foundation. Um, didn't reduce wrinkles. It goes, when you're, you know, dipping in the brush, it all kind of balls up and falls off the edges, but you hardly get any in your brush. It's so weird. It like wouldn't come up into the brush. And so it was hard to get enough on my face to have any coverage. So I found this was like sheer to zero coverage. And that's in the medium color. I can't imagine what the light one would be like. And you had to put on so much to get any coverage that eventually you would have like this sort of cakey sheen, but still no coverage. So anyway, the teenagers thought it was bad. Um, that was the deal on the Cover Tox 10. Big thumbs down on that. And here are the pictures.
All right, so on to the next one. This one is the Mac Studio Fix. Now, I have heard people on YouTube talk about this and say that it is their holy grail. I do not have the packaging to show you, and I can't swatch it for you. I went into my Nordstrom at, with no makeup on, and I had the girl at the Mac counter apply it to my, to my face. She used some kind of a Mac primer. I can't tell you which one. I don't remember. And then she used the Mac Studio Fix powder on top. Um, it's $27.00 for a half an ounce. It's a pressed powder and a compact. It comes in 40 shades. It's claims it's a one-step powder and foundation that provides smooth, flawless, all matte, full coverage finish. It's long wearing, velvety texture allows skin to breathe. All right, so that's fine. Um, in my test, I think that she just applied way too much. She was like swirling this stuff on my face for, you know, a good, I don't know, five to seven solid minutes. And then she'd keep dipping in and going back and back and back. And um, by the time I got home and took the pictures of it, I felt like I had on a mask of powder. Now, maybe if you applied it with a lighter hand, it would look better, but this I did not like at all. Um, so it was, for me, very heavy, heavy coverage, and I felt that it looked kind of cakey and really dry. Um, it was very matte. Uh, it felt drying, and I felt like it accentuated my wrinkles, but it did cover over the big pores well. So where I tend to have like orange peely skin here and here, I felt like that looked nice and smooth, but everything over here by my crow's feet and, you know, where this skin is starting to get just a little, I don't know, I guess a little crepey, you know, it's dry, it's winter. Um, I felt that that looked a little extra dry and crepey, and it, but up here and down here actually looked fine. Um, it was very long wearing. It lasted nine hours plus with no T-zone um, oiliness breakthrough. There was no phone stick or transfer. And the, my daughter told me that I looked like a plastic person, that I belonged in, um, you know, the wax museum. So once your kid tells you that you look like you belong in a wax museum, clearly you're not going to be buying that product. And here are the pictures. Okay, on to the next one. Revlon Age Defying with, uh, with DNA Advantage. All right, now this is a powder in a compact. Here is what the product looks like. And it's got this lovely little DNA graphic pressed into the powder. It has a little sort of natural bristle brush, which I did not use. I used my own powder brush. And this is, it's silky to the touch, but it's, um, it's very hard on here, so it's hard to get a lot of powder on your finger. It's this middle finger here. Oh my gosh, and look how it, <laughs> looks like I've been sitting in a bathtub for five hours. So this one was $13.99 for um, 0.42 ounces. It um, has no SPF and it comes in four shades. Now this one, cl its claims are that it's an ultra fine powder, which it is. It helps skin feel conditioned and look luminous, minimizing the appearance Oh, sorry, appearance of discoloration. Glides on seamlessly, feels lightweight. Skin looks smoother and conditioned. Does not settle into fine lines, wrinkles, or pores. All right, in my test, uh, it took a lot of product to get any coverage, but it was very buildable. Uh, it feels silky and lightweight. Skin looks smoother, but a little dry. It didn't settle into lines, wrinkles, or pores. It was slightly light reflective, giving a nice finish. It needed to be touched up after four hours. The teenager said it looked nice, and on the phone test, it left a slight residue on the phone later in the day. So early in the day, no transfer. Later in the day, a little bit of transfer. So um, that one wasn't bad. Uh, it's you know, a perfectly fine product, and here are the pictures. All right, so the next one I tried was Neutrogena Mineral Shears Powder Foundation, and here is what the packaging looks like. Underneath part, and there's the mirror, and it has a sponge applicator, which I don't really like a sponge with a powder. Like I said, I put these all on with the brush. So that's when that one looks like. Now this one is another one. It's nice and silky smooth and soft. I'll swatch it on this finger. So it is this one here. 
Okay. They're all very smooth and finely milled and they feel great. Um, so this one is $11.99 for 0.34 ounces. Um, as you can tell, it's a pressed powder in a plastic compact with a sponge. It has an SPF of 20 and it comes in eight shades. Now the claims on this one um, are that it's naturally derived minerals cover minor imperfections, skin essential vitamins A, C, and E help improve overall complexion, it has no talc, fragrances, or dyes, it provides flawless semi-matte finish, creates a naturally radiant and glowing complexion, and it has sheer to medium coverage. Now, um, I like this one quite a bit, actually. This is my daughter's, and I borrowed it from her to use it. Neutrogena doesn't have any specific anti-aging products, and they don't have any anti-aging claims, which is fine, but their products are good, and they, they work well even on wrinkly skin, so I quite enjoy Neutrogena products. Um, so in my test, I felt it was a nice soft powder giving sheer coverage. Adding more to build to medium coverage does look a little cakey, so you have to be careful um, you know, how you apply it. And um, you can't expect to have a full coverage with this because then you will look kind of cakey. Um, it has a soft dewy finish. It looks very natural. It doesn't settle into lines, wrinkles, and pores. And here are the pictures. The next one that I tried was by NYX. I finally made it out to my uh, Ulta and found some NYX products. So here's the packaging on this. This is Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation. This is $9.50 for 0.26 ounces. And as you can see, it's a pressed powder. has a mirror. There's the powder. I'll do this on the pinky. Again, very soft and silky feeling. And there's what it looks like. Um, and then underneath it comes with a sponge, which I tried to use once and then went right back to the brush. And that comes in 15 shades. And what's nice about Ulta is that even though this is kind of a drugstore um, brand, they do have open ones out so that you can test it. So I was able to color match myself and get the right color. So it claims um, that you can get the matte finish that features effortless, natural-looking hues to help you achieve a flawless complexion. The foundation comes in a variety of gorgeous shades that provide the perfect finish to flatter all skin tones. All right, and in my test, um, I felt like this was a super soft, um, silky feel. It had good coverage, and it really evened out my skin tone. But it still needed a little concealer for um, like pimples and discolorations. It did not settle into lines, wrinkles, or pores, and it smoothed over my um, orange peel skin. It stayed matte for four hours, and then I had some oil breakthrough, and it needed a touch-up. Um, my teenager test, the girls thought it was a good one. They liked it. And on the phone test, it had very little phone transfer. So all in all, I really like this. And here are the pictures. Now on to um, the two high-end ones that I liked, and you'll be shocked to hear that it's the um, Laura Mercier and the Bare Minerals. I did not try the loose powder. I, I went with the pressed powder in the compact. This is what the packaging looks like. It's the mirror, and it comes with a sponge as well, which is two-sided. This, this side is for applying it, and then she said this side is for buffing it in. And I find that after I applied it with the um, with my powder brush, if I went over with the buffing side and you know kind of smoothed it over, it really did make give it like a really smooth surface finish. And I like this because it also kind of wiped the extra powder off the hairs on my face, which is one of the problems I have with the powder is that it clings to <laughs> the hairs on your face, and that's kind of what gives you that cakey, um, powdery look. Here's the product. Now this one, it so surprised me. It does not feel as soft and silky as most of the drugstore brands did. This feels a little grainy. This is $36 for 0.28 ounces. It's an SPF 15 and it comes in eight shades. Now their claims is that it's composed of a custom blend of pearl powders rich in amino acids. It offers a natural buildable foundation for sheer to full coverage. Creamy texture, oil-free, water-resistant formula adheres to skin for a color-true finish all day. 
All right, so in my test, um, a little goes a long way. Um, I tried to apply this first with the sponge and when I put it on, it was just solid. Um, so I was like, oh gosh, okay, no sponge. So then I went, as I always did with the sponges, back to my brush and even just dipping my brush in and swirling it around like you normally do in the minerals with the compact, you don't really need to do that much swirling. So I swirled it around and then patted it off and tapped it and did all that stuff. And still putting it on, it went on very, a very, very thick coating at first. So I think it's one of the ones that you have to play with a little bit with the application to get it just right. But it does go on very smoothly and it blends nice, nicely into um, your skin. All right, the color that I got was slightly dark and tanny for me. So when I was walking around that day, everybody said to me, did you go to a tanning bed? Were you out in the sun? It didn't go into my pores or wrinkles, but it has a dewy light reflective finish that shows imperfections um, close up in the skin. It looked really good from, you know, a distance. And I think I'm looking for reasons to like it and keep it because, you know, everyone on YouTube loves the Laura Mercier powder. And I'm like, really, can I be the only one out here who was like, eh, it's okay. But on the other hand, I feel like I have to listen to my kids because my kids loved it. They thought it looked terrific. They thought it was the one. So, um, you know, they said it made me have like a healthy glow. Well, I felt it looked kind of shiny and made me look oily. They thought it looked matte. So I'm like, oh, really, are you kidding me? It's, oh, the color stayed the same all day. It wore, it, it was completely worn off after eight hours. I felt like it was, you could see all the, you know, imperfections and discolorations in my skin by then. But when I washed my face with the Clarisonic, there was still a ton of, um, you know, color on the on the uh, bristles, so I, what, it couldn't have been completely worn off, is what I'm trying to say. And here are the pictures. All right, last but not least, and the one that I consider to be the winner um, is the Bare Minerals. Uh, and so I think I might just go back and try to get the Ready Compact in a lighter shade than I'm using now. But my daughter did not really like how this one looked on me, so now I'm not sure. I'm like up in the air again. So anyway, um, this is the loose powder, and I get the matte. And this is in the color medium. Now, I've had this for years. It shows you how much foundation I actually use, not much. Um, because when I bought this, it really only came in like five colors. And now I go in there, and there are like, you know, 15, 20 shades. But this is nice because it does have the travel cap. So you can turn this when you're traveling and then the powder doesn't come out and go everywhere. It closes it. And I love that. That is on the middle finger right here. So that's that one. Okay. It's the Bare Minerals Powder. It is $27 for less than a quarter ounce, 0.21 ounces. It comes in an SPF 15 and it comes in 20 shades. All right, its claims are that it offers flawless coverage with a no makeup look and feel, lasts up to eight hours. Minerals absorb excess oil without drying skin, clinically proven to minimize the appearance of pores, uh, free of parabens, binders, fillers, and synthetic chemicals. This is soft and almost creamy texture. Now this one was really soft to the touch, so I felt that this was a soft, almost creamy powder. It's very blendable. It can give sheer to medium, even up to almost full coverage, depending on how much you put it on and how much you buff it in. It um, makes my big pores practically disappear, and I guess this is why I consider this one to be the best one, because I felt like my orange peel skin up here goes away when I put on the um, Bare Minerals. <clears throat> now, my daughter said that it looked weird over here. She said it looked like my skin was kind of stretched and not in a good way, so almost like you could see the little surface um, wrinkling with her, of course, young laser vision. Um, but I don't see that. And even up close, I feel like it's the same as all the other powders anyway. So if they're all the same here, but it's better here, then that's what makes it the winner for me. Okay. Um, so it doesn't settle into lines and wrinkles. Uh, it's a totally matte finish. The other reason that it's a winner for me is because it didn't doesn't try, this is the matte, right? So it's not trying to have any luminosity or dewiness, which I feel just you know, shows every line and wrinkle on your face. So I love it that it's matte. So since it doesn't reflect light, it doesn't, I don't feel, accentuate 
you know, fine lines and wrinkles. Um, it's long wearing with no T-zone breakthrough. I do not really have to reapply this after four or five hours. It goes a good, I'd say seven to eight hours, which is pretty much all I want out of it. There's no phone transfer early in the day, but later in the day, I think because this, it really does kind of go a little sort of creamy. It feels creamy on the surface, so it doesn't feel dry like a powder and it doesn't look dry like a powder, but it does have a little bit of phone transfer later in the day. Here are the photographs. These are but I am wearing it today because I like to wear what I consider to be the winner, not hands down and not by a huge margin. Um, I gotta say, they were all kind of comparable. Um, and I would say that if you are on a budget, you could easily buy the NYX product and um, you know save yourself $17 for the same amount of product. And it, it does almost as well. The big difference is in the um, the wearability, the amount of time it lasts on your face and the oil show through. So that's it for my foundation review. I think I'm done looking at foundations for a while, although in my massive search I did pick up a couple of samples just this past week of things that people had recommended. <clears throat> so as I try those I might you know give you a little synopsis um, one at a time, but I think for me um, the lesson from this, you know, three-part series on foundation searching is that I like powders. I don't think there's any other way to say it. I really was not impressed with, with any of the liquids with the exception of the Estee Lauder Double Wear. So if you're a powder person like me, you're in luck because there's not only drugstore brands that work great and can work great for you, but there's also, you know, some high-end brands that look terrific. So um, if you have anything that you like better than one of these or that you've experienced some great things with, obviously um, feel free to comment in the uh, comments below and I'd love to hear from you. So thanks for watching and take care. Bye-bye.